Hi, Dave. Hey, Michael. Good morning. Good morning to you too. Did you get some turkey? I did. Mm. We finally finished off the turkey yesterday. Well, that's quick. When I don't eat turkey, but you know, when it happens in our <laughs> house, it usually festers in the back of the fridge <laughs> at least two months. <laughs> but I don't eat turkey, so I don't care. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Actually, the biggest problem is that my wife won't has realized that she can't eat her mother's turkey and she can't eat my stepmother's turkey <clears throat> because both of them insist, insist on cooking it at too low a temperature and leaving the stuffing in. Ah. So basically, the stuffing is just uh, full of salmonella. <laughs> and And she gets sick. So she's like, you know, yeah. So she makes her turkey at like 400 degrees Fahrenheit or something like this. And mm -hmm. the stuffing like barely touches it. Right. And anyway, and, and, and the relatives all marvel about how wonderful it is. And could they please tell her how they, she does it? And she tells them, and then they say, oh, well, I can't do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it just reminds me of the, you know, the doctor, you go to the doctor, it hurts when I put my arm, down, my finger <laughs> down my throat, right? Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, anyway. Yep. Like I said, as a reason I don't eat turkey. <laughs> I hope it's not because you put your finger down your throat afterwards. <laughs> um, well, I actually just never liked meat as a child. I would actually have a tantrum if you wanted me to eat it. All right. Cool. And uh, about three or four years ago, a friend of mine Googled my eating conditions and uh, discovered I have an eating disorder that is actually now recognized. And now that I know that, I found all the all the other people on Facebook like me. So, um, Fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating because uh, up to this point, you know, people were just, you know, actually have some psychology and to go around the whole problem. Um, but um, anyway. Well, that's one of the good things of the internet. You get to connect with people and info. So that's awesome. It's, it's exactly. And what's funny is that I had never thought to actually uh, Google my own, you know, symptoms. Okay, so this thing is still spinning. It says connecting even though I'm talking to you. So I'm going to hit cancel and I'm probably going to have to reconnect. We'll see. Okay, that's nice. So it still says connecting and yet I'm talking to you. And I can start the video even. You can probably see my video. Yep, we see you fine. Uh, so it still says it's connecting my audio. It hasn't succeeded yet, which is fascinating. Okay. Well, I'll let you share your screen. Yeah, I'm just going to try. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's doing it. Yep. So, okay. I'll, I will just uh, ignore the fact that it has the spinny that says it's still connecting. So. I, I presume they still haven't fixed the bug that it doesn't work if you have a public IP address. They broke in May. WebEx. Doesn't work in V6. Doesn't work if you're not added. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we had an hour long bitch fest about Meet Echo, and yet WebEx still hasn't fixed this bug from six months ago. So. Anyway, uh, so I, uh, Hank says he's been through with Thomas, who is here, I see, um, on my, many of his issues. So I probably should delete this 198 and 197 that I just made minutes ago. Um, and I've been through three quarters of Guy's feedback and Guy is not here. Um, so I don't know if anyone else had a chance to read his stuff. Uh, or if you want me to put that on the screen. Just the ones that I've uh, generated pull requests for. And I saw you generate a pull request for one too that I reviewed. So. Okay, so we have some pull requests. Okay. All right, so the only one I put in was uh, the Wordsmith 
you have no, the second one. yeah you're, you're yeah, so the second i did one. this one which is just a collection of small typos um yeah we're, we're all working on this in the last uh hour yep <laughs> so that's okay um, I, I i was reading through some of the issues as you were filing them michael and saying oh well, that was easy let me generate a request for that one so oh oh that's good okay so you were actually fixing the ones that i was Filing. Yeah, yeah, I was following along the ones that you filed, but then you were following them faster than I could keep up with, so I oh, stopped. Okay, I had a specially arranged my windows so that I could copy and paste, you know, <laughs> click, 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 next, click, 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 next, okay. Um, right, so um, let, let's just start with this low-hanging fruit, um, and um, tell me if there's some things, if you've been through his minor bits, um, I think most of them are okay. Um, the I had to think uh, about line two forty one, but I was convinced that it was correct. Two four two forty one yeah. is not just a typo; it changes the meaning, but that changes the meaning in a good way. Okay. Previously, uh, there was referring to claims, and its is now referring to information, and it's actually more correct uh, talking about verifying the information than just verifying the claims is. We'll get to it elsewhere. So anyway, I, yes, I agree with so, all the stuff so far. There's only one word that I want to change later on. Uh, yeah. So um, this one I found difficult to there. You don't like it either. Yeah. Okay. Um, suggested change in the organization that issued. I can go with that because it was government agency. Yeah. I, I would not normally think of a, uh, a you know a nonprofit or a former employer as an agency, but they are organizations. Agency to me conveys you know notions of government. And since before there was you know three possibilities, an agency was one of the three. I didn't want to. Yeah, I'll go with that. I, I, that was one of the places where I was like, uh, that's going to get discussed. <laughs> uh, I think that this is he's complained. I think this is British spelling and this is American. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so I did get that right. All right, so let's just commit this. Um, I can't uh, approve my own thing. Uh, I already marked it as approved for me, so. Uh, but did I commit that change properly? Oh. I think I did. Yeah, shows up. I did. I did, okay. All right, so let's merge that. Okay, so uh, you want to you want to guide us to something that you've changed to? It, we can go through most of their pull requests. The easiest ones are the third, fourth, and maybe fifth. So, like, they remove believable address for the five nits and fix exa nonce example. Those are the simplest ones, probably in that order. Okay. Uh, this one's useful to go and click on the issue number first to see what this one is reporting. Okay, so you can see here produces believable information about itself, yeah. and whether to consider it trustworthy or not. He says it's up to the verifier to decide if it's believable or not. Maybe you mean verifiable. To me, the easiest way to fix it, it reads perfectly fine if we just delete that word, believable, produces information about itself, and that's what the pull request does. It deletes one word. Objections? Hank? You, you can go to the files change now, you can see that that's what I did. But that... Define a yet not introduced term. Uh, we, we have to somehow this is uh, using evidence without defining it. So that's a conundrum and uh, information about itself are assertions. They are not evidence. Therefore, it would be weaker. If you, if you remove believable, you're just talking about assertions and evidence is wrong here. You have to write a, a assertion there. I don't understand. I mean, I don't here. understand and disagree. So. Sorry? Hank, can you get closer to your microphone? Or something? Yeah, I'm trying. I have audio issues. I don't have a working audio device on my notebook, so I'm using this. Is this better? A little bit. Okay. Is this better? Yes. Yes. Ah, I found my mic. I'm directly speaking into it. It's makes hard to watch the screen, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So, um, um, uh, if you remove believable, it produces information about itself that is the only remaining text that is not evidence, that is assertions. Evidence is more than just assertions. 
Yes, I know. That's why there's believable. If you remove believable, we are not talking about evidence anymore. You are downgrading it to assertions. I don't agree with that. Well, then, um, because uh, evidence is more than assertions, and information includes more than assertions. Ev information includes things like who's the signer of the information, who's the signer of the of the assertions. No. Let's figure no. out if the first sentence no of the first. Implied. Let's figure out if the first sentence of the first paragraph of the document needs to go into that level of 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 issue. Now, Guy suggested we might want to use the word verifiable. If people like that better, I'm okay with that. I, I yeah, verifiable is uh, uh, the the first to uh, um, um, falsifiable, and um, I don't know what that adds here, uh, to be honest. Okay, so let's just think about the context of the fact that this is the first sentence of the first paragraph, and so we can't inundate the the reader with all of the minutia of all of the stuff. So yep. um, so the whether the word believable adds to it or subtracts to it or not is not that important in this part. I actually think that Guy's criticism of it is even um, a little bit extreme as well because I don't think we need in the first paragraph to use such precise text that we haven't yet even defined it. We need to we need to rope them out in you know there's some literary issue here we need to rope them into saying oh yeah okay well and even if they ask the question what does believable mean or what does verifiable mean they need to have that like, like well i'm gonna have to re read more so i'll find out right um so michael do you have a suggestion what do you think we should do i, I personally would leave it the way it was with believable uh -huh. um uh, because I don't think because we don't define that word later on. So mm -hmm. it's in fact a throwaway, right? Um, it's it's something that says, OK, so this is something I, I'm going to ask you to believe, right? Like about Santa Claus. All right. And I may have evidence for it later and I may not. And you may not believe the evidence, but that's the rest of the point of the document. Right. So we can't litigate the document in the first sentence is what I'm trying yeah. to say. So I'm fine if you want to propose. And to, I'm also no fine change. with removing it. I'm also yeah. fine with removing and, it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm also fine with switching it to to Guy's ter term, but I understand Hank's uh, a view on verifiable is more technically correct uh, or technically false. You know, it's easier to argue against it because it has more of a definition. I'm believable, okay with, believable, I'm okay with those. believable could be. You know, the start. Uh, the, that comment, it isn't even wrong, right? Believable is just like, okay, well, whatever. So I don't care if we leave the word there or remove it, but I, I, I don't know if we should substitute it. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm fine with uh, the same things you're fine with. Hank? I, don't have, I, I do not feel strongly in this one at all. So. Uh, can I be heard? On... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to talk. I don't know if I've been muted. Um, You're uh, muted. Uh, sometimes when I when I when I read that information, it seems like it's too broad. And sometimes when I introduce the whole idea of attestation, I talk about characterizing the system in some way. So it's really producing some sort of characterization of the system that's going to be used as evidence. Does that help at all? I like that word characterization. I'd like to use it, but I don't know if I'd want to use it in that sentence there. So I'd love to use that word word. I agree with that word. It's a good word. I'm just not sure if it helps in this in this. I mean, I wouldn't pr produce characterizable information about itself. I think that would be just no, I'm too thinking much more of as a place instead of producing information, you're producing a characterization. You're, ah, you're so producing inf information about the characterization of the a tester. So it's itself. It's really replacing itself more than it's replacing believable. As also, it's about its character. We also talk about things character as a as a thing, right? It's just 
but it's, I mean, the point early on was this is the second line in the introductory paragraph and you got to start somewhere. My preference remains to be leave it as is and not removing it because it qualifies information that is just too broad. I, I am happy to remove to leave it. And I would suggest we do that. So I would uh, like to. I, I am fine with that too. We just uh, d abandon this one and annotate the issue that says that we have made a decision and why. Back to 170. Uh... I think Guy's issue, I understand from his first comment there, was uh, as phrased, it's implying to him that the attester creates information that the attester considers believable. And he's thinking, no, but it's up to the verifier to decide whether it's believable or not, not up to the attester to decide whether it's believable. So I think that was his main point. I think it's up to the verify whether to believe or not. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can, you can I say can... that to answer his question in, in this comment. Yeah. It says, yeah, it's well, up to no the tester point. to decide whether to believe it or not. Uh, the evidence itself is believable. I think is your point, Michael. Yeah, yeah. If 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 we had never met and I walked up to a conference yeah. you and I said, "Hi, my name is Michelle," you probably would believe it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So even though my passport, when you innate, when you verify, you discover that's not actually my name, but it was believable. Is the mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. right? Bonjour, je m'appelle Michel. You believe yeah, me, probably, exactly. right? You know? All right. Uh, Go to another pull request. This one? Uh, 173. Well, yeah, either of those are fine. 173 is pretty easy. Well, we have Eric here, so... Uh, yeah, that's, that, uh, that's why I'm suggesting yeah. go to that one next. So I checked, I fixed, I accepted four of the five, and the other one I commented on back in the issue. And then I commented so that, back to you on the comment. Okay. So that's... four of these five are literally exactly what Eric proposed. So I won't go through this so fast. <clears throat> I think 404 you'd also fixed in yours, Michael. Yes, I did. I wonder what will happen with that. Well, since it's identical, hopefully it should just accept the merge. I think so. No conflict. Okay, so this is a lower casing of key material. Yep, because key material is not in the terminology section. Any objections? Nope, those are all good, Eric. No, no objection here. So merge that and then go back to the issue so we can discuss the fifth one. Uh, no, remember the issue number? Oh, back to the issues. I'm sorry. Back to the issue because that was four of the five, and the fifth one was discussed in the issue. Uh, because I think, well, once you once you merge that one, it may have actually closed it because it said fixes whatever, and so it may be showing up in the closed issues uh, if you're trying to browse for it. But before we verify that it's actually closed, we need to discuss the fifth one. Uh, yeah, I think it's 169. I think that's the right one. Okay. You can scroll down because I recopied the one down. Okay, there we go. This is the one we have to dis discuss. Okay. This is it? Yep. I can read it out loud, or you can talk about it. But uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to it. Basically, yeah, go the... ahead. Yeah, go go back up to the top for Eric to speak because you want to see the current text. 
uh, th because that's what he's commenting on. The current, yeah, currently reference value set verifiers appraise the authenticity of evidence. Yeah, there you go. And this is under the definition of reference value provider. Uh, provider. And so my assertion is that you're not actually appraising the authenticity of the evidence. If you're getting the evidence and the evidence itself is can be authentic based on the signature from where it's coming from, what you're actually getting is providing values which allow you to see if the acceptable claims are being recorded by the attester. Because what we're getting is authentic evidence if the evidence is coming from an, an attester, but we don't know if it's acceptable without reference values. Okay, yeah, okay, I get your get your point. So that was the point. Right now we're okay. conflating so the two. So let's scroll down and talk about the proposed text. Maybe we can come up with something, other variation, All right? So the proposed text, the text that I didn't like was um, help, and so Eric, your point is really about my reason number two, my reason number one still stands, right? Um, and so, yeah, I accept your your response on issue number two, or, or my point number two. Um, the reference values help to determine if only known and acceptable claims have been recorded by the attester. So point number one, I didn't like the word only, right? Because reference value providers have nothing to do with that. The verifier might choose to say, I, the, the following claims are the ones that I'm going to pay attention to. So, for example, I'm going to pay attention to all the standard ones. And I don't care if he sends me extra vendor specific stuff. I don't have any reference values for those. I'm just going to ignore them. That's perfectly fine. That's mm -hmm. up to the appraisal policy and the reference value provider. If they don't provide reference values for some claims and the verifier chooses to ignore them, but he has done his policy, that's okay. And so that's why I didn't like the word only. Well, we can get uh, rid of only and then I'm good. Um, is there a difference between known and acceptable versus just acceptable meaning well, does known add, no, I'm, I'm asking if, if known and adds any value or if there's if acceptable claims would be sufficient well, I, I think that behind here is yeah. um a view or a concern that a um a verifier might pass unknown claims through to the relying party um uh, and the relying party may be confused as to whether or not the verifier was actually had actually val uh, uh, appraised. Well, I, appraised. So I would them. say that has nothing to do with the reference value provider. Eric uh, pointed out that this is in the section about the reference value provider. Yes. Number two, I think uh, the choice to copy anything into the attestation results is part of the verifier policy. If the I agree with you. Chooses to do that by policy. That's its problem, right? Yeah, I, so I if agree we with you. Known, then we we get we're there. I think. I'm sorry, if we get rid of only only if we get rid of only, we still need to have known because otherwise, if it's not known, it's not a reference value. I, I'm just wondering if known adds well, so, something based on well, the, the word acceptable to me implies known. So I don't have an objection to it. Just seems superfluous. Yeah. I think well, it so has why to be is it known and acceptable? Why aren't the, why isn't it known acceptable? Why? Uh, Ooh, that that would be fine too, Michael. That works. Accept so if we get if known acceptable claims, of it, that's good. Yeah, yeah. If you delete n only, but if and, if yeah. only if acceptable known claims, that sounds better to me. Perfect. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay. So um, I don't even know where this is now. Um, I hate it when my that's in does that. section number two, and I did not generate a pull request for that section. So yeah. You, yeah, I'm going to just to get do one. Um, an entity. I, I I would say that the old text is not incorrect. It's just Eric's new text that we've just talked about is actually more precise. Help appraise the intensity of evidence. Okay, so, uh, so I'm just trying to figure out where I'm starting. That the, the I'm just going to paste this in. My uh, uh, help appraisers appraise evidence to determine if acceptable known claims have been recorded by the thing. 
That's um, fine. Typically, I'm really worried to touch stuff in the terminology section at this point, but <laughs> it's no no worries about this one. Thinking about it, yeah, like I said, it's the old phrase is not incorrect, but your text is more precise. Right. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. Okay, extra space, but it's marked down, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Yep, looks good. Okay, now issue 169 is actually closed. <laughs> okay. Okay, so issues. Uh, to, uh, there's other pull requests that are relatively easy to do, I think. At least one more that's easy to do, and other ones I think are still doable. But um, so uh, we can look at actually any of these for our fines. So I would probably pick 165. Yeah, it doesn't matter what order. So yeah, this is fine. P pick your favorite one. Okay, but go back to the issue so you can see what it's addressing as well. Okay. So you can see here, huh? I thought a reference value came from a reference value provider. And so this was a text that uh, predated some wordsmith we did elsewhere. And so I, you can see here reference values might come in the appraisal policy itself or via a separate source. And it's the in the po appraisal policy himself, itself he thought was confusing. And so go back to the per request now so you can see what I did with it. I'm happy with that. Any other comments? <clears throat> Four Four twenty one seems like you have to read it multiple times to parse it. I'm not sure I understand it. So basically, it says that the value came when you loaded the policy. When I loaded the policy, I said the value will be foo, and that's it. <clears throat> and it was, didn't come from an endorsement, so it didn't come from external, but it was somehow part of the thing because it was... Uh, Whoever authored the policy either uh, made up the value themselves or got it from somebody else, you know, looked it up on a website or a table or something and then put it into the policy or maybe wrote code to dynamically generate the policy from looking up reference values from someplace, whatever it is. So it, 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 it seems just, to be, it seems to be equating a reference value provider and a appraisal policy owner as the same entity. Which is no, there's two cases. It says the, the, the appraisal policy owner is the term is verifier owner, right? So uh, it comes in the appraisal where you can put reference values in the appraisal policy. If either the verifier owner goes and gets the reference values from whoever is the reference value provider and then puts it into the policy and puts it in, puts the policy into the verifier. Or the verifier owner and the reference value provider is the same organization. Right. Would so it I think grammatically correct to put a colon after the either either to make that split yeah. a little more place that'd be, that'd be fine so so i think the first phrase is restating what's in the rest of the phrase uh, it's, in other words putting it putting it in the appraisal policy itself is no different from a verifier owner uh, providing it um 
The point is the verifier owner could have gotten it from a set. In the case where the verifier owner and the reference value provider are collapsed into the same entity, the, the yeah. same you know implementation, yeah. same organization, same person, whatever. And there's the case where they're actually different. And the verifier owner is just the intermediary. That didn't work. Because in the diagram, they're shown as three separate uh, boxes. And it's saying you can either collapse the two boxes, or they could be two different boxes with the verifier owner being in the middle, in between the reference value provider and the verifier, if you were to actually show the conveyance protocols there. <clears throat> yeah. It, the, the, for, for me, the dissonance is that there's three parts to that sentence. Two yeah. of them ref are referring to the entity, the owner, and the provider, which we've said, and we've desc we've described what the outputs of those entities are. But, but then there's the, there's also the reference. The first part of it is referring to the the output or the message. In this case, the policy. <clears throat> Yeah, this whole paragraph is just, this whole paragraph is just trying to explain how the conceptual data flow might map in different variations to conveyance protocols, just to make it clear that by the way, those lines on the diagram are not necessarily conveyance protocols. Those are just conceptual data flows. But they so could be cool they could be protocols at some future time. Yeah, just like the line that comes from an endorser to a verifier in a conveyance protocol, that could come via the attester who then relays the stuff. I mean, that, that's not right. the data flow diagram. It's just data flow. It's not the conveyance protocol. So this is just trying to explain. If you had a different view of what you thought the conveyance protocols were, it still fits. That's why we say conceptual protocols, because Correct. they could always be. They yeah. could be a real protocol. It could be ftp.ietf.org or not, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. As you wish. So, Dave, the, the case where the the rev values are relayed by the tester is covered by the via separate communication bullet point, isn't it? Can you say it again, Thomas? The the case where the reference value is in band with the attestation evidence is covered by the third sure. bullet point. It, yeah. it's, yes. Okay. It would also be part of uh, if somehow it could be in theory it could even be part of the second bullet if you happen to have endorsements that get uh uh uh, encapsulated inside, you know, okay. conveyed yeah. along with the evidence. Yeah. It's still okay. conceptually, so, it yes. goes from A to B is the point. It just happens to be go yeah. physically via a longer path. Mm -hmm. the, the, the original right. thought that I had for the third bullet, so yes to your question, Thomas, although the original thought on um, my via separate communication is just where there's a, a separate conveyance protocol between the attester and a reference value provider that doesn't have to do with any other conveyance protocol. Oh, right. But that's not the only okay. case, yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay, let's close this. Yep. That one's about the same level of I look at the issue for uh issue first, yeah. Okay, so here he's pointing out that we have claim in the terminology and evidence in the terminology. Evidence does not use claim in the definition and claim does not use the word evidence in the definition. So what's the relationship between the two, right? And so that's what he's commenting on. Is that neither of them refer to the other one. And so I did an update so that one of them refers to the other. All right. I was gonna say, maybe we're trying to make them stand on their own. So they don't have to uh, have cycles. Well, it's like they both refer to a tester and verifier. Yes. So that's okay. If it aids readability, I'm happy to make this particular change if people like it. I, I agree with I agree with the change. And Michael, can you expand upwards so you can see the claim definition as well? Yeah, there you go. It's in 174. There you go. So now you can see claim and evidence. And you can see claim came first. And so I wanted to have a backwards reference instead of a forwards reference. And so I updated evidence rather than claim. And you can see a piece of asserted information up in 175 and 188 was a set of information. So previously the linkage was 
One is the set of information, and the other one is a piece of the information. So it was kind of there, but it wasn't obvious, and so. I have uh, two uh, concerns about this. The first of one is uh, evidence does not necessarily has to be signed as other SDOs use evidence using a secure channel, uh, putting the offloading the duty ah. of, of, of uh, doing that uh, in, in the channel okay, itself, fair enough. it's not signed, and it, then it, also- it's uh, I agree. It's you, authenticated. It's not an arbitrary tool. Yeah. Well, Hank, would you prefer the word believable? <laughs> I think then I don't think that's very proper. <laughs> I, I am fine. I hadn't thought about that. You're right, Hank. I agree sure. with the fact that the word signed is not. Well, the best. What we what we meant is it's it's authenticated and integrity protected. Those are the properties of signing. Because um, what I had in mind here was that uh, it wasn't just the set of claims, right? If it was just a set of claims, then the whole because that the point of verification is also to make sure that the that the signature or whatever that the signing entity, whether it's inside the evidence or whether it's in the channel or whatever, is the is an entity that you trust, right? That's part of the verification process. And so the evidence I would consider to be both the claims and the context of those claims. In other words, what's the identity that that, that those claims come in the context of, and whether that context is inside or implied or whatever. Either way, but I wanted to keep that notion somewhere because uh, a set of information I claimed a set of information was both claims and the context that those claims came in, the security context those claims were associated with. So you could say a set of claims. Uh, and the security context that they are associated with, or if you have a better phrasing and stuff, but I didn't want to lose that that context. The security. Context. I, I think a very specific property of evidence is that it can only be created by an attesting environment. So I don't know how to capture this here, but it can't just yeah. be solved well, by itself. Remember, we have a whole section on it later. Right, that had, that goes into all this detail. All right, we just want the okay, so high level version here that is not incorrect. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the uh, definition of endorsement could also use the term claim. Um, yes, it well, it could, but I probably wouldn't do that only because 175 has the word asserted in there. And usually we don't talk about endorse that. I agree that endorsements can be asserted so that you have to say do a, a tested and stuff. So I, anyway, um, that's why I wouldn't do that. It didn't cause confusion yet. So I wouldn't try to fix endorsement, but you're, you're not wrong. But um, right now let's try to fix up evidence or decide to not fix it, which is the other possibility. We're, we're, we're already down the path of people saying that an EAT token can be used as an endorsement. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I agree it can. And a, a neat token is an example of a set right. of claims. But but we don't have to say that in the architecture document. We can say that in the ID document. Although I agree with that. So, um, but the, the question I want to uh, settle on for this PR is what word do we want to use in 188? Michael suggested integral, which I can live with. It's not. I don't know if that. Yeah, I I, I thought a great I kind of like what you had before, Dave. Which one? Signed. Uh, not signed, but uh, you're, you you had an explanation uh, for uh, security context or something of that uh, nature. A set of claims about an attester, comma, together with a uh, with a security context, comma. Yeah, I thought that was pretty close to what we meant. Uh, maybe associated with a security context, maybe uh, I, I think I like uh, associated with because together makes it sound like it must be inside the evidence itself. Yeah, associated with. Yeah, what do people think about that? I think that that just brings too much baggage. You know, what is the security yeah. context? What does it mean to be associated with it? It's it's okay. really clouding the issues. I don't even think you need anything. It's really just a set of claims, right? Um, why, why do you even need a word uh, modifying that? We are trying to really communicate is. the idea that the claims are 
not made so, haphazardly. I, I think they are authenticatable. But they, they can be made haphazardly because it's really at the verifier um, function to uh, to evaluate those claims. And so I, I'm fine with Peter's suggestion because we have a section later on that gives more details. So I'm fine with Peter's suggestion here. At least authenticated has to go in here, I think. Somehow. Well, you you, uh, you you could argue for minimalism by by overloading what does appraisal mean? Because we use the word appraised, and of course, appraised has all of the baggage that we said we didn't like in the other words. And so I, I think either way, there's baggage. It's just a question of what, what baggage do you prefer? You know, what's which baggage is more preferable to the other baggage? Yeah, I mean, if you look at line 180, you'll see what we did is we inserted the word secure and after the word A in the endorsement definition for similar reasons. Yeah. So, so I prefer the baggage at the appraiser because then you can start talking about the quality of an appraiser uh, mm -hmm. as, as one, a more quality appraiser is one that authenticates claims in some way, mm -hmm. right, as well as verifying them. Um, for minimalism, I would delete uh, that is. That's fine. But um, so we don't want to qualify the claims like they are. So I, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to say believable. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, come now. <laughs> That's why we ended up with believable. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Problem. Yeah, I mean, m mostly what we mean is it's machine readable. A claim is something that's machine readable as opposed to inferred. Well, there's there's the joke, right? Would you believe? Yeah, but I don't. Think okay. <laughs> For those of you who know, get smart. Anyway, um, so so I can live with what we have on the screen because we have a section on it that goes into more details here. Yep, me too. Yeah, okay. So it's perhaps not as precise as we could be, but in terms of level of precision, it takes a whole paragraph to get to that level of precision. We have that level layer, so. Is it, is it only about, or is it always, always from Manitester? Because endorsements can be about in a tester, they're not evidence. Uh, I think it's... That one is not a change from the old text. I think it's close enough. Okay. I mean, we we used about before, and nobody complained. So. Okay. I mean, it's also. Really that, uh, talk it, about endorsements. It's like okay, this is basically now also matching endorsement, therefore creating ambiguity. But okay. I mean, the whole the whole point is you is the 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 tester mm -hmm. and the endorser are not. Or, or, I guess. Hank, I think it's correct as is. Remember, an endorse. I'll just repeat my comment from previous meetings. An endorsement is actually not required. It's used for scalability and management ease, but it's not strictly required from a security sense. I would disagree, but maybe I'm. I'm that, wrong. That's a conversation we had before. It's what do you put into your trust anchor store on the verifier? If you put the attester's key itself, you don't need an endorsement. Anyway, the the a side issue because that's part of a different issue. We've had lots of discussions about yeah. before. It's not. Yeah, maybe not through the what, what the words that are there are not wrong. Yeah. It's just a question of how much more you want to say at right. this point in time. Exactly. If I close my eyes, this matches endorsement. That's my only problem <laughs> I have with it. <laughs> and and, and Hank, so did the red line one eighty eight. Yes, unfortunately. Which is why I'm saying it's not it's not any more it's not any different from what it was before in that sense. Yeah, but, but you made me aware. So now <laughs> I, I mean Hank's point is valid. And so um, it, it's, it's like I'd almost rather cop, copy and paste that sentence and for the definition of both endorsements. Okay, so, uh, 
Ned, if you're agreeing with Hank, then I should reconsider it, Chair. I think Hank's suggestion was instead of about to say from or perhaps generated by. It's it's generated by. Okay, so if both of you would agree with that. I'm fine with that. Is, are you happy now, for Hank? I'm happy, and this this matches a little bit uh, your your very initial thought that the conceptual messages should always have a defined source. Yeah. I think that's okay. Fine. Fair. Okay. Okay, this is easier to change by show by looking at. Okay, so there's two changes in here. Look at the bottom one first. The bottom one, look at where the uh, ending curly brace was. And the ending curly brace is now moved down because the point is the third the, the, the second line there is inside the message, not outside the message. That, okay. that, that, that was the fix. That was a typo. Every other place in the document was consistent, and this one had the curly brace in the wrong spot. Can I um I just want to make a suggestion if see if you're happy with this. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, only if you do the same in the uh, expand upwards because it's consistent with the lines above it and you'd have to make the same change in the lines. What's the what's the arrow, the meaning of the arrow? Uh, it's the message that gets sent. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you can see uh, like line new line 1328 has the same spacing. Which is why I put it at that level, and so. Um, yeah, but it has the entire. Okay, I see. Yeah, there. okay, gotcha. All right, yeah. so I'm fine with what you did, Michael. Thanks for checking. And, and what's the meaning of the arrow? Uh, message passed. The 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 text of the label on the line from left to right. Oh. Ooh. If this okay. was in if this was in slide form, there would be a straight line with a text label on it, and the text the two lines is the two is the two line text label. Okay, the te the text is clobbering the line. Yeah, correct. Okay, that's kind of weird. Which you're supposed to understand from all the other lines before it. So. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So, so let's talk about this the text, text up here. Yeah, in all uh, in so we have three three main examples that are walked through. Right, there's the non-spaced, timestamp-based, and handle-based. Each of the other ones talks about the differences from the other ones. This one only mentioned an advantage and didn't mention a disadvantage. And so this one uh, was anomalous compared to the other ones. So this starts the disadvantage, which now actually makes it match the other two sections. I think this word round trip time. Oh, okay, yeah, delete the word time. You're right. I mean, it does it does involve more time, yeah. but that's not yeah. the point. Yeah. No, I, it, right now, it previously read as, well, this one was the best, and the other ones say, well, the problem with that one was, and so now it doesn't come across as saying it's the best. It says, here's the trade-off that you're making, which is what the other examples did. Yeah. Any other comments? No. No. I thought Ned had already approved this one, so thanks, Ned. Yeah. Simon Frost. Yeah, so I agree with Jake. Yeah, Simon Frost is on the is on the call here, and I I think. Oh. I agree with Hank's point go. that uh, this one actually combines multiple proposals into the same pull request. It would be easier to review if they were separate. That's true. It, the, as I, uh, I, I agree it will be easier to deal with, but the whole point of this is that you read it as one thing. Okay. Uh, so before, I, and I'm quite happy to take it away and, and bring it back as multiple pull requests, especially as it now needs a month's worth of merges. But um, <laughs> the whole point of this was you have to read it as one thing. So if I put it in as two PRs, it would, wouldn't have achieved that result. Now, uh, an example 
of where I would find it easier to review as maybe two or requ two pull requests, one that would depend on the other one would be fine, is uh, you'd added something that I kind of liked um, in somewhere down the bottom. You must, you have, must have had line ending else? issues. You must have had line ending issues to have caused yeah. all this diff. No, 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 it's because he moved the no. section. He reordered the text. Section oh, okay. Yeah. So if you look down in the green, big the big wall of green text, which is where it was moved to in his pull request. Um, keep going. Oh, stop. Stop. Okay. It's yeah, so you can see it stop, 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 stop. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you can see this consumes colon and produces colon. Um, those are changes. Or what I can't tell Simon from this pull request is whether it's in, whether there's any changes to say lines to. Sorry, keep scrolling. I I I, tr I tried not to change any right. of the text, right. but I'm saying I couldn't tell. Right. So for example, not, if the absolutely. used by and produced by additions were in a separate pull request from everything else, then okay. it would be easy for me to tell that. Oh yeah, you didn't change anything yeah. else because here you did make some changes, so I couldn't tell. Do I have to pay attention to every other word? Yeah. Okay. So I, that's I, I why I'm quite happy to redo this. Yeah. But the whole point was: Do you yeah. agree with the, the the big change, which is the layout? to sort of slowly introduce the, uh, you know, the rigor on the definition. Yeah. And, that... and, and to do that, I would recommend don't read it as a diff, read it as the whole file. Well, and fair enough. Read it as whole file, I don't think you can. Yeah. So, fair on, enough. Uh, so, so for everybody else, you, the main could... point is he's proposing to move the terminology after the use cases. That's the main Correct. point. Is, right. Fair, now, fair. whether okay. people think that's a good idea or a bad idea is the main point of what we should discuss. Okay. <laughs> So, um, right, can you see Simon updated all the use cases to not use the formal definitions? They're just used word in layman speak, right? Correct. So that what so this came as a result of we we ran this past people who weren't that familiar with the, weren't familiar with the document, right? Weren't necessarily remember. familiar with the uh, uh, the background, and what they found was um, there was. There was too too much too soon, um, and the use cases uh, when they were reading the architecture deck section, it was it was too far away from the terminology section, which is one thing, mm -hmm. um, and also that it jumped straight into terminology without use cases. So the main thrust of this is to say, okay, we take the use cases and move them up front and remove most of the. Um, formal tech, not formal te terminology. You then have the terminology, and then the terminology is right next to the architecture where you need to refer to it a lot. The other thing it does is change the um, the layout of the terminology from alphabetical to be um, uh, sort of forward reference only. Sorry, you re backwards yeah. reference only. Yeah. Yeah, you actually grew it. I actually like the fact that it was kind of grouped by uh, roles versus uh, messages. I don't remember what the labels were, but um, that that was the main change you made in the termino in the terminology organization, right? Okay. The only so the outlier there is claims. Claims is the only thing that's neither roles nor messages. Well, so, I think I, I pointed out in my review that it actually missed one, meaning it deleted one from the red that it did not add into the green. I forget which one it was. Person, thanks for the review. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, are we in agreement that section two will move to before section four? Um, before Simon talked about the rationale, I liked the terminology before. But if you're saying you actually did a usability study with uh, real readers who wanted it afterwards, then I would have no objection to that. I, so at one point, we had the discussion that we wanted terminology before because it was used in the ref in their use cases. Right. right. So we felt like we couldn't use terms that we hadn't defined yet. Well, that was the one comment that I made that I saw Simon responded to, which is there are times in the reference use cases section on Simon's PR where it does use terms like, you know, a tester and relying party. Yeah. And now I think those, Simon, you and I felt that. able to do felt able to do that because they were in the uh, introduction. I'd left I left yeah. only those that were in the introduction. Which I, mean, I, I don't have a problem with forward references right. in the use case to the terminology. I don't yeah. mind that yeah. um, because yeah. Most of our terminology is at the 10,000 foot level. 
yeah. kind of self-explanatory. And so then they get to the terms and they get tightened up and that's okay. I think that's a fine. So I, I am fine with Simon's answer. I asked it as a question or a concern and I'm happy with your answer to Simon about using those terms in the reference use cases. So I, 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 agree, I agree with the, the, I agree with the concept that having use cases be the first thing the reader focuses on is is uh, good is good, it's intuitive, and given that the terminology is fairly, you know, precise, that does seem like a lot to try and digest initially. But I, I don't I don't have a strong opinion either way. People can don't have to read things sequentially; they can move around and. Hey, Hank, you haven't spoke up on this one. Do you have an opinion on this one or no opinion? Don't hear anything from Hank. So I think offhand, my feedback would be uh, I think it's fine in, in principle, whatever. Of course, it needs to be you know rebased and uh, fix up the missing definition and so on. But in terms of the direction, I think I'm fine with it. Okay. So um, it's three minutes to the hour. Um, so we are going to. Uh, I, I made this pull request here that all it does is move the move the location. So there's no changes whatsoever except for that white space um, okay. to it. So I want to commit that and then I want to rebase um, Simon's stuff on top of this, which if if life is good, we'll just uh, <laughs> we'll just reorder the right place and the right thing. Right. Yeah. Life is never that good, though. Well, well, I agree with this know, approach. It says it showed diffs from what you just did as far as what Simon's PR should you rebase it on top of that. And I think it should be fine. So I think it's a bunch of work to do that, but yeah. Uh, and then Simon, are you willing to do that? Yes, of course. Cool. Thanks. Well, I may just be able to do it right now, but okay. So well, I don't again, think it's going to be easy. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll try right now. Uh, and, and if, if so, I'll leave it open. Okay. For us to review the other pieces so that I think that would be easier for us to see. Okay that uh we change and on in particular i would like to do the moving of the terminology in the right order okay in the order that you proposed and then a separate diff that says any updates you want to make to the terminology that makes sense okay 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 and so we're meeting again next week hank says that he and thomas have more work to do uh this week on his review comments and so i'm hoping we'll have text to to deal with in the end was there anything else you wanted to highlight in the list of issues that we should uh do between now and next week well gee i just i like i threw them in almost on red right okay. um but i mean obviously i was reading as i went um so if you go back to his, his document um there's some of them that just say um, ignore this issue so there, there's one that i responded to that i don't think we should do anything about um, yeah there's a few the, that i felt that 181 way. is the one that uh, i responded to in the issue that i'm proposing no pull request yeah uh, I, 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 I don't have a problem with all that kind of stuff um i i uh, uh, my one response was that this was a review from a very uh, TCG point of view, and that maybe yeah. some of the point is that uh, we're trying to uh, address wider issues than the TCG reference point of view. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. Um, so to me, I, this one looks like it's a respond an email, but don't make any changes to the text. Uh, yeah, so I'll, yeah, and I have about, maybe six or seven more of his issues to to plonk in. Um, okay. So I'll do that and then we could, yeah, respond in e okay. email. So maybe uh, if there's a collection of them that we go through, I don't know if we just want to have a label or something like that that says, use that, that fix. says use uh, yeah. And then if we have a set of these, once we go through all of his, then we just send one email collectively with the won't fix issues in them or, yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. Our, our, People okay with won't fixing this? And it sounds like you are, Michael. Anybody else have a strong opinion? Again, this is predominantly people familiar with the TEEP uh, working group uh, would have an opinion on this one. So on that issue, there, are, that issues, there are other issues there. Okay. Yep. 
Okay. I don't have a strong opinion. Okay, thanks. All right, so we'll talk to you guys next week. Okay. Cheers, Bye. Bye. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Yeah. What? Hello? Yeah, you're still here. Oh, I thought that Thomas said something. Oh, okay. Started to something. Okay, bye. Okay. Now, uh, glad that uh, uh, Eric and um, Simon were both on the call.